Uh -huh. So, what seems like two weeks, uh, <laughs> we finally beat this guy. Yeah, it's just, just taking us forever to get through this battle. We're finally aggroing some of these guys ourselves, too. So, I don't remember why I aggroed that guy. <laughs> I wasn't really sure if he was going to automatically when I go through those doors. I like how he's got, a, anyway. he's got a tail. That's, that's cute. I think it's part of his armor. Yeah. They're they're really hammering home the the whole dragon armor aesthetic thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's been um, it's only been what two days for you guys, but it's been like two weeks for us, and a lot of things have happened in the uh, interim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like um, like that uh, that whole uh, electronic, electronic entertainment expo explosion. Yeah, explosions for for ethereal entities thing. I, uh, yeah. E E E. Yeah. Everybody knows it's the it's the the most hyped time of the year for uh, for people like us. <laughs> what what do no, I mean? every single time <laughs> E three like shows up, everyone says like oh it's in decline or like it's becoming less important. But I think it's like being steady for a while. Well, it's not gonna go anytime soon. It's I think people are becoming more cynical of the corporate hype machine just in general and E3 kind of represents that at its highest point so oh hey this well, guy, um, uh, they, they've had they've had some different stuff this year you know it's still like E3 represents everything that the the big budget game industry stands for and uh, so there are a lot of people who are just kind of just kind of over it um, but then of course there are a a very, very significant portion of people who still get excited for it because they want to be able to enjoy all of the uh, new stuff. Um, and I don't blame them. Uh, we got a giant egg, by the way. Sweet. What's that egg do? If we... It's probably a dragon egg. Um, <laughs> and if we give it to the merchant now as an iron keep, he lets us into the dragon covenant. Fantastic. What is that? And I think, I think it functions the same way as the first game. Ah. So, I'm not sure why he's oh, yeah. the Covenant leader, like, nothing about him, screams dragon, but whatever. <laughs> I noticed that we have a um, dragon's shadow flying overhead as well. There's a lot of dragons in this area. Uh. Oh, sorry. <coughs> Wyverns. Wyverns. Yeah, uh, gotta be... Uh, Wyverns, whatever you want to say. Gotta be, uh, gotta be so pr particular about your terminology and fictional be taxonomy. Taxonomy, yeah. So, um... So is there any Dark Souls news in uh, E3? Uh, there was Legend of Zelda, that's kind of Dark Souls. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. It's actually like, there's so many Dark Souls elements that, um, well sorry, there are stuff that is in Dark Souls that's in the new Zelda. <laughs> For example, when you enter a new area, the name of the location appears on screen. <laughs> Zelda has never done that, um, but Dark Souls has. Well, uh, and it also... It like, sort of has. It has. It, it, it has um, you, you can equip armor, basically. It's not just, you know, your tunic and then Zora armor or Goron armor or whatever. It's, like, different parts of your body that you, you know, put stuff on. And each, you know, like a shirt or trousers or whatever has armor values. Right. So, you know, that's, it's getting strange. more like RPG. Uh, that's strange. And you can also, like, there's some weapons that you find out and about, or, like, some enemies drop their weapons and you can use them. I did see a, um, I saw a gif of, like, a fire wand type thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Fire. Yeah, they, they're, like, showing off a lot of how you can burn a lot of the, um, mobile world. Yeah, and then there was, there was, uh, chopping down trees and stuff, too. Yeah, and like the the actual axe that you used to cut the trees down with is an actual weapon you can use. Um, and I think like normal weapons can actually cut down trees as well, but obviously not as efficiently. So, you know, it's Zelda's getting. You know, I don't know why people from the past like they say Zelda's always been an RPG. Like I never really got that, but now it's getting. You know, yeah, this is half RPG. It's, now. Well, it's always been an action adventure game, right? Like, yeah. It's and there and action adventure games are in decline. Like it's all like even Tomb Raider is I consider it a third person shooter now. Uh, more or less, yeah. It it it's weird because like people 
Oh, hello. Who's, it's a live dragon. Who's this saucy fellow? An ancient dragon. I can tell by his wings. Oh. This guy actually doesn't talk. He, um, he thinks at telepathy. you. You'd think if he was just thinking right into our brains, he would be able to use English. Yeah. Um, it's, and then it's being translated anyway. Yeah, yeah. This is this is like that snake talk in Harry Potter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're speaking dragon mouth. <laughs> or dra dragon tongue. Yeah. Um, and then we're here because he's going to give us a specific item that we need to progress to our quest. Like, this is actually a dead end. Isn't he uh, an optional boss fight? He is. He's, he's a bit like Vandrick. All right. Are we going to uh, are we gonna attempt wait, attacking him? Wait till episode point? 37. <laughs> are we going to go on a rampage and just kill everything that we haven't killed? By the end of the game. Yeah, basically, I I saved a lot of the harder or like more um, tedious uh, optional bosses to the last episode. So <laughs> stay tuned, folks. I'm gonna kill um, a dragon. It was it was originally gonna be six bosses, but David and his like, uh, it takes so long to render the video. <laughs> uh. So it's now five bosses at the end, not six. It isn't even just that it takes a long time to render it, it's that my internet is not good enough to upload large files like that. <laughs> well, actually, originally I wanted to save all of the endgame bosses from all three DLCs and lump them into the last episode, and that would make it a two-hour episode. <laughs> um, so I killed ten bosses in the last episode, but that's... Uh... That's not practical. That video would have been probably about like five gigabytes when it was fully rendered, and that would have taken me literally over a day to upload. Assuming well, that assuming that YouTube's uploader could even handle a video of that size. <laughs> it would be an interesting episode to call like in less than like Dark Souls 2 the movie. <laughs> it essentially is, and we're wrapping up pretty much everything in during the episode, so Uh what's a faith stone for? I think that's a faint stone, oh. and then I think that, I don't know, I think that removes the upgrade that you put on your weapon. Does, know, it, does it make us pass out and return to our last, uh, oh, bonfire. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It, yeah, it yeah, teleports us to the last Pokemon Center. <laughs> yeah, we just used one, so, uh. So, that, I think, um, that's the area cleared, aside from the actual boss, and we're back here because I want to show this one thing, if you actually bring light... After acting tells you not to. Oh. He comes in so, and tries to beat us up. Uh, no, that's not acting. That's like some, some guy I don't know. Just, just some dude. Just some dude in a suit of armor with a uh, with a mace. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> that mace also casts fate spells. I think. Um, uh -huh. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but there's. So, um, if you light that torch, one guy appears, but if you lit this thing, ooh, don't you dare. What's that thing? It's a statuette, oh. and it actually lights the entire area. Huh. Are we waking so, up the demons in the deep? Uh, no, we're just waking up these guys. Oh. That's... With like revealed, the shadows rise. <sighs> so, these guys will spawn at seemingly random places so I know if I look that thing before I clear this area we're gonna see a lot more of these guys but um, the, the, you know when we come back to kill Vandrick in the last episode we're gonna see more of these guys so that's boring <laughs> well it's there so eh, I would have hoped for a uh, oh so he's moved and now there are more of these guys attacking dead giants yep um, and I'm not exactly sure why this guy is here. I don't know why Van, um, Ben Hart's here, but... Yeah, he just figured he'd move. It's a little bit more comfy up here. Where was he last time? He was in front of the, uh, place with that petrified lady who ended up hacking up her lung in front of no, us we saved her. No, no, that was ages ago. No, I think last time he was, we summoned him for the mirror knife. Oh, well, I, I was talking about, like, when we saw him, like, sitting around somewhere. Nah, nah he was in Drang Lake, honestly. 
Was he? Yeah. I don't remember seeing it. I don't remember much of Drang Lake. It was in the actually. beginning of it. It was like right after the Dragon Rider fight. <laughs> I don't... You mean the double Dragon Riders? Yeah, the, the double Dragon Riders. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't remember much of the castle, like, because I, because everything after the castle just blended together into the castle, I don't remember, That's like, any fine. of it. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we're using fist weapons, but I'll take your sword, too, if you want to give it to us. <laughs> so, the weird thing about him is, like, um, so if you complete his quest line, the he gives you his um, armor and weapons, you know, whatever. So so if you you get his sword that he's using right now, but if you kill him, you know, after that happens, you can guess his sword again. So you could get two oh. copies of his of his sword. So oh, we're actually um, doing something with this. Uh... Yeah, yeah, we we just got the item that lets us do this um, from uh, the uh, dragon. Uh, okay. <laughs> we have entered. Memory. What was the, uh, Giant. uh, what was the item that we needed? Ashen Mist Heart. Uh, okay. So I've, I've read about these, like, memories in the game, but I've never actually, uh, seen them, I don't think. Yeah. Well, this is for the main quest line, and didn't you watch Ga Yassian and Gabe's playthrough of this? I was not paying attention to the actual video at that point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, this is Forest of the Fallen Giants while the Giants were invading. Um, so, essentially, you find the corpses of the Giants and then you enter their memories and this is... Um, this is how shit went down. Sure. Uh, and by the way, I think that that Fire Lockstone in this room right now I think that's the only one that you really shouldn't use because it activates a trap and nothing else. <laughs> well, wow. fantastic. That's that's totally yeah. worth it. I am um, well, HO. Yeah, and like a, a like a spinning blade just appears from nowhere and it it, it will catch you off guard. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know like to design huh. that. Hey, look, there are some uh, giants. Real giants. Those are. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so... Obviously we got giants in the first game, giants here, and I don't know if they're just like designed differently or if it's like a different race of giants. Because giants in the first game, they were just large men, but in this game, they're like, they look actually different from humans. Uh... I don't remember the giants in the first game. What? Where were they? I don't remember the one that's like he opens the uh, the gateway to Sand's Fortress. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, those guys. Th th those were the giants. So. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah, so I know it, it, it might be. I have no idea why they're they look different, but anyway. So um. Maybe they're different races of giants. <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and then we have to destroy this thing, this platform, and it lowers. Uh, well. So I have no idea how this guy got here. He, uh, he climbed up the uh Yeah, stone but he's too wall. big to fit through any of the holes. He patched it up a little bit after he got his gigantic shoulders in. Also, they're, like, how are humans supposed to get in this room? Because there isn't a normal door. <laughs> <laughs> the only way to get here is blasted um, holes in the in the wall, <laughs> and one of them leads outside where there isn't you know anything, and one of them leads to a roof <laughs> that you can't even climb up. So that's um so that's just like a isolated room for no one. Yeah, that's a little bit uh mm, didn't quite think that level design through entirely, did they? No, <laughs> I didn't. Anyway, so I don't know why that giant. Or is a giant wearing just armor? Me now? Um, I don't think a giants wear armor. They they just wear blowing cloaks or whatever. But anyway, oh, um, like, uh, maybe it's just his uh, his dual wielding clubs. Yeah, it's his clubs. Um, so these there guys are go. fucked. Yeah, <laughs> pretty easily taken care of there. 
Yeah, so the, so you get a soul of a giant if you examine a specific giant corpse, and then if you examine the corpse again, it teleports you back. So, so all right, why? I'm going back. Why have they turned into trees? Um, because that's what happens to giants. At least in this game, they turn into a their corpses just grow into trees. Okay then. Yeah, it is <laughs> just a thing that happens. Just, just, just what does just. The natural life uh, of a giant. Yeah, yeah. And we got a ninja turtle there. That's cool. Are we gonna actually end up finding this uh, Oro dude that we're traveling inside? No, of? I, I think um, the the corpse that we use to teleport here is Oro. Yeah. So I'll, anyway, cover for me. I'll be right back. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm kind of confused as to why. Uh... How did? <sighs> How does it work that we can travel through the memory of a dead... Okay. Wait. I don't... I don't understand. Alright, alright, alright. Hello, Sir Banhammer. I don't remember... I don't remember what your name is already. Benhart! Oh, thank you. Thank you for saving me in my uh, time of need. <laughs> Nay, problem. Are you... Are you a dwarf as well? Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't don't mess with me. If you're like Gavlan, then. Uh. Anyway. I hope uh, I hope all you viewers have been excited about E3 because I I didn't watch it, but I've. Uh, what? I. I'm sorry that I just got knocked off track there, but I was not <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. You seem honorable with your sword there, yeah. Wait. But you're... You're wielding it. Surely you're wielding it. Okay. Alright, I guess we're... Gonna go traveling into okay. Now, can I talk about E3 a little bit, please? Are you gonna, are you gonna weird me out? <laughs> oh, Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2. Oh, uh, um, yeah, I've been, so I've been sort of keeping up with like the coverage of E3, but I didn't like watch any of it myself. Um, the thing that I find the most remarkable about it. Just uh just kinda like quickly get through the subject is what Microsoft did. Because they really seem like they just don't know what they want to do with their consoles anymore. And uh that's that's remarkable to me. It's like they <laughs> they have this Xbox One that they marketed in the worst way when it got announced. And now, what, three three years later, they're basically saying that the Xbox One is worthless and you shouldn't get it. And don't, e don't even bother thinking about getting one because they have a new Xbox coming out. And then they have... They do. And then they have a new console that's, like, yeah. better than the Xbox. And it's like, Microsoft, what are you doing? I don't... Like, what is... Who is the, who is the tar target demographic for... The Xbox Slim and Project Scorpio. Like, I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> well, I know, if you want to have your quick fix, then it's the options there. Well, it's like... The... Like, especially with the announcement that Xbox One games going forward will at least largely be available on the Windows Store as well. It's like, yeah. what is the point of getting an Xbox One when you can... I mean, I'm not suggesting that people should buy them on the Windows Store because the Windows Store deserves to fail, but... It does. <laughs> but th that, that just means that both the Windows Store and Xbox One are, like, going to flop. <laughs> so I don't under... <sighs> like, they're, they're, they're segmenting their own audience here. By like saying, don't buy an Xbox One. Wait for the Xbox Slim. 
Oh, but don't buy an Xbox Slim because Project Scorpio. <laughs> oh, but don't buy Project Scorpio because it's only going to be useful to you if you have a 4,000K uh, resolution TV. Don't buy any of that because just buy it in the Windows Store and Windows 10. Yeah, and and don't buy it in win- on the Windows Store because the Windows Store is Games for Windows Live 2.0, and that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like Microsoft. Why? Mm. Uh. So, by the way, who's this, this guy? guy? Yeah. Um. So my belief is that the so he's wearing Drang like armor, and I think. Oh, is the he... corpse that we looted, the drawing like armor yeah. form is his corpse. I was, I was about to because, say this, Because uh, looks... he doesn't have a helmet. Yeah, this looks very similar to the... Um... Yeah. And, all right. Um, so, this guy, Captain Drummond, um, I guess he was a cool badass. You know, just lying here with his legs broken. <laughs> and no helmet. No, yeah, that's that's how you can tell. Yeah, he's he's he doesn't a super, wear a helmet. Yeah, super badass because he doesn't have a helm. Yeah, if it's any like a battle scene or whatever, you can tell who the important guys are <laughs> if you can see their faces. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, on that on that note, with the 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 whole subject of super badasses who don't wear helms in massive battles where they probably should uh yeah and it, well did they either wear the tallest helmet or no helmet <laughs> yeah the most ostentatious thing or nothing um another thing that uh i'm actually kind of interested in that recently got announced i don't i don't know if it was announced at e3 or like just prior to e3 but uh they announced a dynasty warriors berserk game Oh yeah, which uh, is very interesting to me because um, I really like the I really like the monster designs in Berserk, uh, <laughs> and I really it, it's the 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 franchise as a whole has had a lot of influence on games like Dark Souls uh, and Bloodborne. Um, well, Miyazaki is just a massive Berserk fan. Well, yes. So, so I'm interested in seeing a uh, a new Berserk uh, themed game, um, and I I don't mind the Dynasty Warriors gameplay. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> See, that's how he got in. <laughs> Smashes through. Yeah. He, the, uh, the the giant in that um, inexplicable room just climbed on top of the roofs and smashed through the wall. Like yeah, that. but there's still no normal way for humans to get in. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I hope that the I hope the Dynasty Warriors Berserk uh, uses the theme well, and I will admit that the trailer was a bit trash though <laughs> oh this the cgi one <laughs> the, of that rape scene yeah the announcement trailer that is the most tacky thing that you can Why would possibly you have a say on, on that on that specific part yeah out of every out of everything you could pick out of berserk you pick uh we're not we're not joking when we say the yeah the the cgi trailer was entirely um, the female leap getting raped by demons. <laughs> it's, I mean, that's 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 what Berserk is basically. Um, yeah. Like the, the way I the way I described it to um, to someone the other day was that it's basically like uh, anime Game of Thrones. Um, and for better or worse, <laughs> that is. Mm. Uh, because it means that, like, it's it's interesting if you... Oh, well. Okay. Yeah, you have a time limit when you enter these memories. <laughs> I shouldn't have talked to Drummond so long. It's, um... Like, it, it's interesting because, like, it treats the world in a very serious and very grim manner. But at the same time, if you don't want to uh, deal with that sort of stuff, oh well. Yeah, uh, but I mean... Hopefully the oh hello. <laughs> Thank you for opening yeah, the door it, for it us. Yeah, it just spawns here. <laughs> um, 
hopefully the relatively lighter nature of the Dynasty Warriors as a franchise means that they won't have so much of that in the actual game. Well, that's how they revealed the game, yeah. so I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't bode well. <laughs> but, I mean, how are they going to tie in, like, that kind of sexual violence into the, like, gameplay or anything anyway, so... Now I'm, now yeah, I'm concerned so that they're going to... place a tentacle monster. I'm concerned that they're going to find a way now. <laughs> or, yeah. that, or that the story is just going to have a lot of cutscenes that are like that. And I'm like, eww. It's going to be the first NC-17 rated game. Even though we already have an M rating. It's going mm -hmm. to be too... Too... Too, uh... Too, um... Violent and, and graphic for the M rating. It's going to get a Z rating. <laughs> yeah. The first ever in history game to get a worse than M from the SRB. <laughs> well, um, you know Z ratings do exist in Japan. <laughs> uh, that doesn't surprise me, I mean. <laughs> well, I think that's their equivalent of yeah, um, that's, M+. Plus. It's not, that's, yeah, it's not the same, like, um, ratings board, quote-unquote, I guess, that gives it to them. I think it's called Cero or something. Yeah, and then. Anyway, uh, oh, by the way, do you recognize this area in the uh, in the normal game? Heaven knows. Well, Where are well we? remember the pl remember the placement of this guy right here and this corpse, because um oh, is that? The, ah. the the one that we're attacking right now, that's the corpse that we're gonna enter the memory of next. Is this the dead end? Um, close, I think. But no, not exactly. Um, oh, what? and I need to show you this because you don't just enter dragon memory. Uh, sorry, ah, right. uh, giant, giant memories. Memory, you also yeah. enter dragon ones. Right, because there's a dead. Dra De How are their memories still around if they're dead? I have no idea. <laughs> was... That's just what the Ashen Mist Heart does. I was asking that, like. While you were uh, while you were gone, there's like, how are their memories like still around and still like cognizant when oh dragon memories oh cool that's that's a great hey, name. hey remember this area <laughs> that's a great name uh this is what is what it's the opening cinematic in the first game is it yeah oh this is where the dragons are uh, all dead in one dragon's memory. <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> he's, he's been through some shit. <laughs> he so, actually, um, he actually I, I do believe there is nothing here. Life. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you can see, I, those are probably arch trees that are uh, broken in the distance. Right. Because, you know, the arch trees are where the dragons came from. Yeah. So, just to make sure you don't come back, you destroy where, <laughs> you destroy the spawner. And then we have another dead dragon inside of the dead dragon. Are we going to jump into his memory, too? Okay. No. No, oh, like Inception. We got his We got a soul from the memory of a dead dragon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. 